Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to launch the Mario Q spacecraft. Somebody in the most recent Mario Q video uh, wondered about the aerodynamic stability and how it was going to be launched, so I decided that I would demonstrate that or test that. Uh, I don't know for sure, but yeah, so that is what we're going to be doing. There are many possibilities for how to launch Mario Q to Mars. We haven't done that so far. I've just been cheating into orbit around Mars for the testing. And so, yeah, it was designed for SLS, uh, meaning that uh, this is a 10 meter fairing, uh, one of the standard fairings for SLS. And it needs to have its wings on hinges for this to work. And so the main thing we're going to test with this is whether the hinges break or not. So how much stress can they bear? Uh, that is really down to the part. Obviously, it should be possible to make a wing hinge that would work in real life. But uh, so this is just testing the infinite robotics parts to see if they work. But yeah, everything was sized uh, with this in mind, uh, including the vertical stabilizers. That's one reason we have two of them. And uh, so, yeah, and the body itself was sized so that it would be in line with SLS's thing. Uh, so it's only the wings that sort of stick out. It's possible that this could fit in Starship if we sort of tuck in the wings a little bit, uh, make sure that the hinges aren't so big. And that really only affects the aerodynamics in terms of how much drag it gets. But of course, that would throw us off in terms of the landing program if we do that incorrectly. Uh, you'll note another addition. We have solar panels on top. And that is because, well, we're going to be having a long trip to Mars. So the fuel cells, which this has built in, will not have enough uh, left over by that time. They only have about 14 days with a fuel cell fuel. It's only meant to operate like that. So uh, we have the uh, form-fitting solar panels there, which I made. Let's see if this works out. We are at the Mars window. This is a standard SLS Block 1B, no frills. Okay, we've got a Dawn launch. Not much infrastructure on the pad here, but at least we're here at pad 39B. SAS on, throttle is up, and oops, ignition. And launch. So the aerodynamics are not the big problem on this end. Uh, the big problem is the hinges on the Mars end. And we'll see about that. Nice dawn launch. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing set. So, there it is. It's always important to design your vehicles based on specifications and limitations. And that was the case with this from the get-go. I don't really get people saying that it's ugly. I think they just don't understand it, or beauty in general. Uh, there are lots of considerations for this. For instance, I was concerned in the Shinkansen space plane about ground visual uh, visibility. And in this case, I decided to improve its ground visibility because of that by using this nose, obviously. Uh, the Shinkansen probably should have a droop nose, considering how long its nose is and how they probably won't be able to see anything on landing very well with that. I mean, there is always external cameras, but that's not preferable. So things like that go into uh, thinking about this. Obviously the location of the fuel tanks and the need for a certain payload volume went into this as well. I think this might have done better if I underfueled the EUS stage. I've done that before. I've often found that it actually works a little bit better, at least the way I fly things, if we underfuel that somewhat. Okay, separation. And we need to unlock the fuels here. I had locked them because I usually underfuel these tanks, but. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be enough in this case.
Yeah, I'd say my trajectory was partly at fault here. But we'll try this. It, it has too little, I think, but let's see what we can do here. Well, do we have a good transfer or not? Um, lowest create node. Okay, well, uh, that's not too bad. All right, it is a good transfer. Let's do this then. Oh, wait, that's node in two years. Mm, no. <laughs> um, can we get something a little bit sooner? ASAP? Okay, well, that's not that that bad. Okay, all right. Okay, well, continuing. We should extend the wings right now. There's no reason to wait on that. Make sure they fit properly. And lock the servos, hopefully. Hopefully that works out. That didn't include our burn time. <laughs> Why? No. Why did you not calculate the burn time? We could give the Mariku more fuel if it turns out we need it. And that ends up being efficient. Or less fuel if it turns out that it's more efficient to just have the EUS do more of the burn. Okay, I think we should go. It wants to be upside down. Well, that's fine by me. What won't be fine by me is if we enter the atmosphere again, so we'll watch out for that. Okay, we are running out of this stage. Alright, I don't want all of the engines on actually here. I don't want the Ford ones. Okay. Of course, lots of thrust here because, well, they need to help with landing and everything. Actually, it might be more efficient to shut these down too, seeing as how things are going. These tail ones are more efficient. Okay, let's see how much of a mid-course correction we need. We probably do need a mid-course correction. Oh, I think it just left us. RCS, please. Thought I saw an encounter there. Yeah, that's an encounter. It's gonna take a while, but... Yeah, and we will need an inclination adjustment mid-course. Okay. Well, let's work with this. Okay, we'll set it to that. And just a 4.7 meter per second mid-course adjustment. I do. I did plan and wanted to flip out radiators. Really, if we could just have the top of the wings be radiators, that would be most convenient. Uh, something... Something that could help with the boil off in particular would be wonderful. Of course, in general, you need radiators, but um, we definitely need to control boil off for now so that we don't have excessive boil off. I'll go to the tracking station and come back, and hopefully, it's not in a bad state. Well, we lost a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay. Approaching the correction point. Maruku does have a hibernate mode. It's not meant to carry people on the trip to Mars, after all. That is not its job. Its job is to land them on the surface, so it's strictly orbit to surface. And that's important because it does have an unpressurized bay. If that whole thing was pressurized, it'd be heavier. Uh, it would allow people to live in it, but it would be heavier, so... Uh, you know, it occurs to me, oh, whoa, 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 no, oh gosh, kill rotation, kill rotation. Uh, it occurs to me that our ISR units currently landed are at 
inclinations. Well, that that one's not too bad as far as Phobos actually. But we might not want to be completely flat. Okay, that that's probably good enough for now. And we still have this orientation, so let's keep that. And we proceed. Okay, we are in Mars SOI. I'm reorienting for the sun here again. But oh, I needed to activate SAS for persistent rotation to do it. Okay, so yep, we are going to have to pick a periapsis to enter at once this settles down. And since I haven't done initial entry testing, you know, capture arrow capture testing, I guess we're going to do that now. I do have the trusty book of arrow capture data. Uh, this is my own testing. I just note down all the results. And I'm going to have to... This actually has a lower ballistic coefficient than practically any test that I've done. Which is one of its uh, important points. Okay, this... SAS is not doing a good job right now. I'm going to go with 56 kilometers like we have here. I think, based on my prior data, that this should work out, but we'll see. It actually takes surprisingly little power to refrigerate the boil-off in space. On the ground, the boil-off is orders of magnitude worse than in space. In space, the boil-off is not as bad as people might think. It is uh, pretty good. But that's not the ISR unit we would want to land at. It's these over here. Uh, but we are still out of plane right now. Oh, we still lost some due to boil off. We only have 890 meters per second now. We're much lighter than we were before. We have experienced boil off. So again, it's all about the wings at this point. And we're going to try and come in flat. I don't know if the wings are going to force us down or not. But we're going to try an aero capture like this. May or may not work. It'd probably be easier if we fold the wings during this part, but I wanted to test the integrity of the wings with those hinges, so. The liquid hydrogen is all gone. The fuel cell liquid hydrogen. I had only planned for 2.4 kilowatts for the fuel... Uh, power consumption, I think maybe I accidentally duplicated it on the body so that we're consuming double what I was planning on. Might be reasonable to consume 4.8 instead. But again, it's just a fairly short-term lander vehicle. It's not meant for them to live in for a long term. Yep, it's gonna go more horizontal. That's not ideal. Maybe we should just fold the wings. On the right side, the wings seem to be holding on the hinges. Don't worry about this. <laughs> In fact, this might be even better as a way of testing those hinges out. Even this will probably still give us a good capture. Probably. But again, because of its huge surface area, it doesn't need to go very low in the atmosphere to capture, so it doesn't experience that much heat, one way or another. And we have captured. It's a very loose capture. If we had kept our orientation right, I would hope to get a much tighter capture at 56 kilometers with this. Probably within Phobos orbit, but because we were rolling around all over the place, it wasn't as good. I'm not going to go through all the arrow braking passes. I'm going to try and have it land, but we'll just cheat it into a standard orbit and go from there. Instead of trying to do all the arrow braking, what I will do is uh, waste some fuel in order to simulate the periapsis changing. But... 
what's our inclination right i would like to not change our inclination with the cheat orbit thing so 36.159 inclination it doesn't have longitude of ascending node oh there it is uh we'll just go with 36. And I want the circular orbit, so hopefully that's close enough to what we had before. And our hopeful landing sites are over here right now. So I'm going to bring our, so that's fine. I'm going to bring our orbit down and up again to simulate the fact that we raised our periapsis. So I'm just going to go all the way down to 56-ish, or like that, and then pull back up again, just to waste the fuel. Nope, oh, should be close enough. Okay, off. And I'm going to go to the tracking station and wait for the ISR units to come around to our orbit. So I think on this orbit, we can try to land on it. It's not going to be precise. And I don't know if we have enough fuel now, because we used a bit. Probably should pack a little bit more. I didn't add any more compared to the landing tests. So, yeah. <laughs> Might have wanted a little bit more than that. Done a lot of burns that we did not do on those landing tests. And also we have the solar panel mass. And the hinge mass. But okay, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna tweak anything. I'm just gonna go run. No, I did not want the parachutes to deploy or anything. Can we disarm those? Not mean for them to be armed at all yet and here i'll also uh you know we'll just go with the rear thrusters i think i'll activate the other ones later okay the orbit burn okay let me activate that one activate that one before it goes into the time oh i missed that one Oh no, I didn't. Uh, it's both fine. All right. Okay, here we go. We are oriented for descent prior to getting into the atmosphere. It's always nice when it manages to do the turn beforehand. Let's see how it goes. We only have 588 meters per second now, though. We are carrying a load. Hmm. It seems like we're we're not gonna get very close to our target. It's over there. Um. Uh, we probably wanted to during the deorbit burn correct some of that and i did not so yep this would not be the i mean really nasa would just time the descent for the right time for when the location would be properly under the orbit but anyway in this case i was rushing because i'm mainly interested in testing the folding wing thing and making sure no other problems occur though the lack of delta v might be a problem we'll see so since we know that we're not going to be landing accurately i'll fizz warp normally i wouldn't fizz warp during the testing because uh that does throw things off but in this case i don't think we're going to be landing very accurately anyway it doesn't i mean i don't know how much cross cross range this would have if we rolled towards the thing at mars's atmosphere is super thin so my guess would be not much. That that amount of distance probably needs to be corrected ahead of time. Um, okay, Fizz Warp might be throwing it off a bit here. It is not supposed to do S turns, and this would not be the proper way to do those. I don't know why it still has that message when I've disarmed pa the parachutes as well. That's another annoyance.
I mean, the current vertical velocity is not 1.4 per second either. We have a negative velocity. I wonder if the parachutes are going to deploy properly like this. And it's the wrong side. If anything, we want it to lean this way, not that way. It's using a lot of RCS fuel doing this lean. Oh, it's, I think, righted itself, but it seems like the center mass is too far. Well, I should say the center of lift is too far back. Yeah. Because it's having to use RCS to pull its nose up right now. But at least we stopped that persistent roll to one side. Still don't understand that. I mean... We're in thicker atmosphere right now, so if it was aerodynamic, it'd be worse right now than before. So why was it leaning to one side at all? No idea. Still, otherwise the hinges seem to work out. We're now going further away from the target. As expected. Important to make sure that your landing script, by the way, does not do something weird when it starts going further away from the target. Make sure that it doesn't suddenly like try and flip around or something. That is not going to be helpful this close to landing. It's not too bad though. I think the roll thing was just doing fizz warp. Something about fizz warp messed it up. Don't ask me what that was about. Okay, we're going to get a verdict on the parachute soon. Are they going to work? Yes, they are out. And now I don't even know how much delta V we have because of the orientation. We'll see. See if we can land safely. Okay, full parachute deployment. Pretty soon those will be cut and then it has to do the rest of the landing with the engines. Here we go. All right. And... Oh, it's rotating a little bit. Ah, a little bit weird. A little bit weird. But okay, it's safely down there. How much uh, Delta V did we actually end up with in the end? One hundred to spare. So we we've got some work to do on that. We need to control boil off better with radiators and all. Um, we need the initial entry, the aero capture part, stability wise. We can work on as far as maybe folding the wings up would be best for that. Then the center mass and center lift will be more in line, and then uh, and probably the center. It depends on whether the center of lift ends up higher like that. Right now it would be fairly low, so if we fold up the wings, if it's higher, then it might orient right. But yeah, we'll have to see about that. But in any case, the initial aero capture won't kill it. Uh, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, the boil-off situation could do some work. But otherwise, there you go. Uh, from... The surface of the Earth to the surface of Mars, uh, not quite the right location, but that was because of the timing of our deal return and not being in line with our targets at all. So that takes some some planning, but I just wanted to test this aspect out. So SLS Block 1B will work. I don't know if it can fit inside Starship, possibly. And then the other option is to launch it on the Orion carrier plane and just dock a transfer stage to it. So, those are the ideas, but here we go again with the Mario Q. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.